Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan and welcome back to another video. This one is going to be a lot different. I've actually made up to 75 top five mod episodes and to celebrate the top fives getting all the way up to 75, I'm going to show you the load order that I've chosen out of all the mods that I've covered throughout all the episodes, I've chosen my favorite one. Some of them aren't even in the top fives. I've just been playing around with mods for a very long time, and I've structured together a playthrough that I'm really enjoying right now. Um, I'm level 12 on this character, and I actually haven't completed a big amount of quests yet, but I'm having a lot of fun playing on this, and it feels like a whole new game in general. So I'm going to be going through the load order that I use, and the one that I personally go with whenever I'm going through a playthrough, because I've actually had a lot of requests on people saying, hey, what mods do you use personally? What mods do you use on your playthroughs? So I'm going to be going through that for you. So as you can see, you might already notice that the camera looks a little bit different, and I'm using a different mod that changes the camera, and I will get along to that right now. So if I jump into my mod page and my load order here, let's just log in. First of all, a must-have for the mods that I'm using right now is the unofficial Skyrim patch. It fixes all the bugs in the game. I'm pretty sure everyone that has played Skyrim with mods knows that the unofficial Skyrim patch is really good when it comes to fixing a lot of the glitches in the game. And then moving down to the mods that I actually have enabled right now, we have the Sovngarde Mist font replacer, which you probably already noticed that the font looks a lot different. And it just changes the menus and the different things that you have up, and the text is just a lot different looking. We also have Daedric is Magic which I haven't created Daedric armor on this character yet but it actually gives it a red glow effect on it and it just makes the Daedric armor look a whole lot better even though the vanilla version Skyrim their Daedric armor looks badass just think of the red glow effect on it as well it just makes it look 10 times better so that's why I have that enabled and then the Sky HUD Oblivion preset we have as you can see if I back out my health and my magicka and my stamina is in the bottom left corner my compass is in the bottom middle and that's all we have there but if I pull out my bow here um, it'll actually pop up how many arrows we have on the side as well. As you can see, I have 67 arrows, and uh, I like that a lot better. I like this preset a lot better. It also changes the crosshair in the middle of your screen. It's not, you know, four little lines. It's just one dot, so you know exactly where you're going to be shooting at all times. Now, like I said earlier, I do have a different camera preset enabled, and it's the Xbox One Dynamic Camera Mod. Now, this gives you a spell that brings up customization options. I can show you that right now. I'll just go under Shouts, I believe. No, it's under Powers. Um, power of self vision and once you use it it'll show you what type of you know camera angle do you want to change like whenever you're idle the alignment to the height of the camera you can change whenever you're in melee which is where I'm at right now here I'll show you if I go over and I pull out let's say my orcish sword as you can see my camera is zoomed out a little bit and to the right which makes it a lot easier to fight in third person <laughs> which uh, makes it a lot easier to fight while in third person, which is something that I actually like doing now. Back in the uh, vanilla version of Skyrim, I really thought that fighting in third person was very pointless because you couldn't really see where you were swinging most of the time. And same goes for the bow and arrow. It's off the right shoulder, and you could see perfectly clear where you're going to shoot, where your arrow is going to land, and it is perfect in that aspect. So third person is just 10 times more useful, and whenever I have nothing equipped and I'm just running around, it's in the middle of the screen and makes my character very easy to see, as well as everything around me very easy to see as well. Something more about the camera angle mod is if you use the shout and you go over to FOV, which is something that I think should be in every game, whether it's on Xbox, whether it's on PS4, whether it's on PC, anything should always have an FOV or field of view slider, which changes how your game actually looks. If you haven't noticed yet, I'm playing on one of the highest field of views, and whenever I cast spells, you can see it, it looks like my character's maybe a little far away, you may notice. But once we change the FOV, the default is 80. So let me show you what the game normally looks like. So if I bring up the menu, it'll zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, this is what the game normally looks like. But if I bring up the thing again and go back to my custom preset, which is 100, which is the highest you can go, and we press down and we go back, it zooms us out a little more and gives you more of a wider lens of what's actually going on around you, and I like that a lot. And even in games like Minecraft, I don't know if you guys have played Minecraft on the Xbox One, they have a field of view slider now, and it's just very useful to go around and actually use that as well. 
So FOV sliders in any game and FOV changers in any game are definitely a must have when it comes to first person games. Moving on to the next mods that we are going to be covering, uh, I have the quality world map, which if I back out and I go back, as you can see, it's a lot more colorful. And the oblivion preset, as I talked about earlier, comes with the pastel map markers. So a lot of them are covered and, you know, there's a lot of colorful areas around the map as well. I haven't actually discovered a lot of things yet. I went exploring once and I discovered all this stuff and cleared all these out but uh there's a lot of different colored areas on the map that you can see and uh, it just changes the map to be a lot more vibrant looking and it's a lot more colorful as well so as you pan around here you can see a lot more color in the map so something very small to add into the game but something pretty useful as well and something that i like to have on Next up we have the Far Better Sun mod, Surreal Lighting, and Eternal Sunshine, which means that the sun is a lot more brighter and it looks way better, and then the Surreal Lighting just greatly alters the contrast, the brightness, and saturation for the outdoors, and Eternal Sunshine makes it so that there's 20 different clear weathers to occur throughout the various regions of Skyrim, and there's not as much, you know, cloudy and rain. It's still, it's still rainy all the time, and it's still cloudy a lot, but a lot more of the brighter, you know, sunshiny weathers are more often in this mod and then the enhanced nighttime which i can switch to right now and there's the enhanced uh sun right there it looks a lot better in the sun rays as well and it just looks like it's a beautiful day out today but if i skip forward to the nighttime i will show you the really good nighttime mod that i have enabled and it changes the sky to actually have a lot more brighter stars in it and it's very beautiful to look at whenever you're just exploring the realm of skyrim late at night See, if I look up into the sky, so many stars in the air. We got the northern lights, and there's uh, so much to look around, and it just makes the game look a whole lot more beautiful in the sky aspect of things. Next, I have the Rich Skyrim Merchants, which gives all merchants, innkeepers, blacksmiths, spell merchants, fence merchants, and the Thieves Guild, and then the Alchemist and Street Vendors in Skyrim, five times the amount of gold. I always thought it was really annoying having to wait to sell all my items, and then, you know, waiting 48 hours, and then selling it all back, so I just made it so I could do it all in one swipe. It's not really a cheat mod or anything like that. It doesn't make the game any more easier, or any more difficult, or anything along those lines. It's just something that is more convenient for you. Another mod that I have enabled is the Blackjack mod, which is really simple. It just allows you to play Blackjack in an inn. All you have to do is talk to the innkeeper and start the game. I covered it in a Top 5 mod episode about like a couple weeks ago, and it was a really simple mod. You just walk in and you could talk to them and play a game of Blackjack using Skyrim themed cards, which I think is pretty cool. And it's just real simple. That's all you have to do. So I'm not going to show you guys that right now. And then we have the Vampire Suck, which is no attacks in towns. This happened to me a lot before I actually downloaded the mod. Vampires would come in to the city of Whiterun or whatever city you're in, and they would attack you. And if other people would join in on the attack, the vampires could actually kill people that you talk to on a regular basis. I remember I would always go down and I'd be getting attacked and I would, um, get attacked down here and they would always kill the blacksmith that's down here that I would always use to upgrade my armor and everything like that she would just always be dead and I wouldn't have to I'd have to go in to buy and sell stuff and it just made the game a whole lot more tedious whenever the vampires would come in and kill all the NPCs that I actually really liked. So that just makes it so whenever you're in a town, no vampires can actually get in. Because you would think that the guards outside the town wouldn't let the vampires in, so how'd they even get in on the first place? So it just makes the game a little bit more realistic. And now we can move on to the next mod, which is the multiple rings. Now, very simple mod. All it allows you to do is have more than one ring on a hand. And I think it's very useful because in Oblivion, whenever you would enchant stuff and you, you were finally getting along with the enchantment grind and actually enchanting your character and having a lot more you know experience in the enchanting skill tree, um, you were able to put on more than one ring, making your character even more powerful. Now, this just allows you to wear more than one ring like you were in oblivion and you can use your enchantment skill you can use pretty much anything you'd want to wear more than one ring and have more than one enchantment on your character at once uh, moving on we have the lock picking interface redone which is why i kept it nighttime so i could show you what it looks like uh, it just changes the game to have a different lock picking mechanic um, it's the same it's the same little mini game to unlock the door um, it just looks a lot different and it looks a lot better. It looks more realistic whenever you're trying to open up a chest or a door. 
I also have the placeable statics mod, which allows you to move stuff in and out of your house and place stuff pretty much wherever you'd like. I've done a full video on my channel covering the entire mod itself. It's a whole separate video, so if you do want to see that, I will put a link in the description at the top, and you guys can go and watch that, and I go way into far detail on how that mod actually works. And basically what it does is it allows you to pick up any item that's inside of your house, and you can move it to anywhere you want, and then you can fix it in that location, and you can use it there. So say I didn't want my alchemy station to be in the corner. I could change it. I could pick it up. I could move it to a different location, and I could put it down, fix it there, and then use it there in that location as well. So it just adds a whole bunch of more customization options into the game. And that also moves us on to the next mod that I have installed, which is Anna's Interior Editor, which is pretty much like placeable statics, but a lot better in an aspect because you can craft the items that you want to put down. You don't have to actually go up and pick up an item that you already have. This mod allows you to craft items such as barrels, alchemy labs, enchantment tables, any type of item that you would want in the game, and it equips it as a scroll, and then you can cast the scroll on the ground, and you can fix items that way. So having placeable statics and Anna's interior editor gives you the full customization options when it comes to customizing your house. And speaking of houses, I have the uh, Breeze Home mod active as well, that once you buy Breeze Home, it is a fully upgraded house, and I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of a tour. I'm just going to walk around here and there because I already did cover this mod before and it's one of the best Breeze Home mods that I've actually ever seen because everything is so compact in one area and there's no wasted space at all. You'll see once I get on the inside. They didn't waste any space when it came to creating this mod. And once I start walking around here, as you can see, um, you'll be able to see all the things that are located around here we have you know the unusual gem along with the bowl of gems and there's like literally no wasted space at all when it comes to this mod and there's a plenty of opportunities to put you know the rare items in the game you could place the moth in a jar torch bug dragonfly all that stuff and then the mythic dawn commentaries on the bottom the elder scrolls on the top here and then there's plenty more locations to put things as well as you can see here's all of the rare masks in the game and then there's also a different set for each of the other rare items in the game as well so lots of uh, customization to do there and if we walk around the house around the back here we have a little bar area and here's the children's room here and go upstairs just give you guys a brief overview of the house here's Lydia's room here lots of uh, equipment on the walls and mannequin um, and then around the corner we have our enchantment table here, our alchemy lab, disenchanting font, and staff enchanter all right next to each other. So it's all really close together so you can use it all. Um, more mannequins here, more weapon plaques, and just a lot of items to make the house look really spruced up. And I love this right here, all the armor in the armor chest and all the boots around. And it just makes the game and makes the house look a lot better. I have the Axe of White run up here because I literally just completed that quest before making this video. I just wanted to, I didn't want to be like super early in the game when I made this video. I wanted to actually progress just a little bit. So I got my character up to level 12, which I will show you how I got to level 12 so fast because um, a lot of the mods that I have in here make the game 10 times harder and I'm also playing on expert right now which isn't like a super high difficulty but you know I just I didn't want to die like constantly constantly but I did want to have a challenge as well so running over here I'm actually gonna head outside because some of the next mods that I'm gonna be covering feature things that are on the world of Skyrim so I'll have to travel outside of Whiterun to actually show them off the next mod that I have installed is the Harvest Anything mod, which, if, if you're an alchemist like me, is very useful because you can walk around and pretty much any of the areas that have, like, grass or yellow shrubs anywhere, you can actually harvest them and you have a chance of finding alchemical ingredients. As you can see, I just found an orange dart wig there, and if I walk around yellow shrub and just spamming, it's kind of like if you've ever played Oblivion and you walk around and you try to collect things, sometimes it'll say you find nothing of use, but on other times it'll say that you found an item. So that's pretty much the mechanic that's in this game. If you walk around and you just want to collect anything that's around here, once you start actually walking around and collecting a lot of it, you should get, let me see if I can get another one. Yep, there we go. I got a hawk beak out of in here. And it's just, it, it adds more ingredients into the world, and you can walk around and find random things. As you can see, I just found hawk feathers, which I actually needed for later on, for another mod that I have installed. Um, 
So I just really like being able to craft potions a lot easier and finding ingredients in the world as well. So now let's move on to the next mod that I have installed which is poison arrow crafting and portable arrow crafting. Now, poison arrow crafting allows you to craft poison arrows, as, as you can probably tell by the title. And if you go into the Drunken Huntsman and White Run, you can go up and there is a table that has everything that you're going to need. And there's also a book there as well that allows you to craft the deadliest arrows ever. I really like using them, and I really like going out and using them on other people in the world. And they give you these hunting arrows here that you can use to poison and to actually poison them you have to get the fungal poison as well and you use it to craft the poison arrows and then you can use them in caves you can use them on animals you can pretty much use them however you'd want and it is just a great way to go around and play the game with the marksman I, I really like this the marksman skill tree it's something I've been upgrading a lot on this character so if I go over to here we have the marksman skill tree and I actually have a perk to increase I'll, I'll do that one um, slowing my bow time by 25% <clears throat> marksman I, I wanted to do a archery playthrough this time because normally I'm a blade and a mage but this time I actually went around and I'm using a bow more now so we're gonna see how that goes and uh, another mod that I downloaded on this one would be the uh, portable arrow crafting which I can actually show you now because I actually got the uh, the hawk feathers that I needed to craft them uh, I must have been mistaken, but uh, I found one of the hawk feathers. Apparently, I needed two, and you need an iron ingot and firewood as well, and you can craft the arrow crafting kit. And once it's crafted, I've used the mod several times, so I know exactly how it works. Once you have it crafted, all you got to do is go under your miscellaneous category, and it would be in here, and you just click on it, and your guy will start up a animation such as like this. Like, see this animation where I'm going in like this, and it shows me wood, hide, iron. It looks exactly like that, and you can craft wood and arrows and any type of arrow that you would desire just anywhere in the anywhere in the land of Skyrim if you're like all the way over here I could do it or if, let's say I was exploring a cave all the way out here and I ran out of arrows I could just go and I could get into that menu and craft arrows anywhere I go so that's what I really like about that mod Next up, we have three different mods that cover the bows. We have scoped bows, better bows integrated, and belt fastened quivers. Now I can show you the scoped bows and belt fastened quivers real quick. As you can see, the arrows on my back are actually down by my side, which I think is a better place for them because when they were on your back like that, they were kind of like floating in midair, I always noticed, and it kind of like broke the immersion in the game a little bit. But this one is a lot better because they're actually attached at the waist. And then the scoped bows, I will go and I will craft one for you right now under the iron category the longbow scoped let's just give this a craft right here I actually I was actually using the scoped bow but I ended up finding this bow right here which I'll cover how to get it in a second um, but if I go over to the scoped bow I can pull it out and I can show you that there is a new area as you can see it's not that great but it's just the long bow but this is for every bow it they all look a lot different there'll be ones that as you can see in the thumbnail of the mod itself there was a big scope on it and then you can find other bows out here that are a lot better so actually let me see if i can purchase one off of uh off of this lady over here maybe i can find a one with a better scope on it just to show you guys Blades, helmets, um, much okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna save this or anything, so I can I can sell all my stuff. Let's see. Just until I have enough money. I know that they're kind of expensive. Um that's three thousand, that's nineteen hundred. Okay, I'm so I'm pretty I'm pretty close. Let me just sell a bunch of stuff. Okay. Yeah, it should be enough. Um yeah, there we go. Okay. Let me show you what this one looks like. Um, Orcish bow scope. Pull this out. Better scopes on it. It has a lot more accuracy on it. If you're crouching, you get this one. If you're standing up, you get this scope, which is very good, very useful in a lot of different aspects in the world of Skyrim whenever you're going around and actually either hunting or if you're going through a cave and you want to kill people and bandits are attacking you, this is the mod to have whenever trying to pick them off. Now as for the better bows integrated, it adds a whole bunch of new bows into the game such as the Colovian composite bow, the light bow, the dark bow, the Khajiit bow, the chieftain bow, the hawk bow, the Valenwood war bow, the mammoth reserve bow, light and dark, which is the one that I found out in my travels, which was on a giant that I was clearing in one of the uh, 
areas outside of Whiterun, I found this one, and it's really good. It's one of the best bows that I have right now, so that's what I have on. Um, so you can go around and you can find all these bows, and they're very powerful, and they're worth a lot too. So if you aren't actually a person who uses Marksman, you could just sell off the weapon itself, because this one's worth 2500 and uh, that could be for a good bit of profit for you and your character. We have the Summer Mist mod, the Enchantments of Skyrim, which is the one that I'm using here next. It has 120 new enchantments into the game, and on armor, here's all the ones that are included with it. There's so much to go around, and there's so many different enchantments in the game that it just feels like a completely revamped system of enchanting, which it pretty much is, and it's very useful. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. It just adds a whole bunch of countless areas to explore when it comes to enchanting your items and actually... Uh, having a more powerful character. Um, we also have the big more kill moves and decapitations which is a uh, mod that allows you to have a lot more of those animated sequences where you're either chopping someone's head off or you're stabbing them or you know more normally at the end of a fight whenever it's the last enemy it'll give you like a little cutscene of you killing them but it doesn't have to be at the end of the battle anymore normally you can now do the kill move in the middle of battle and take out the enemy real quick and move on to the next enemy or it won't give you it and you could just continue killing until you do get the um, animation so it just adds a more animation into the game and you do more kill moves to make your character feel a lot more badass so that's why I downloaded that one we have the Ordinator Perks of Skyrim, which adds over 400 new perks in the game, which is a complete overhaul. If I go and I show you all the skills in the skill tree, it'll completely blow your mind. I haven't even went around and actually read all these yet. I just know that there is so many more options whenever it comes to crafting. Remember when smithing wasn't shaped like this? It was more of a you know certain system where it was, oh, now you can craft this armor, now you can craft that armor, and that, that was pretty much all it was. Well, there's so much more to choose from now. There's so many different types of, you know, perks that you can get onto your character and different types of, you know, things that you can just add on here. As you can see, enchanting has so many more areas to explore when it comes to perks and same with alteration, restoration. See all these perk trees? All of those perks, all those stars are all perks. It's just, it's unbelievable. It, there's so much to choose from and there's so many more customizable character options and there's so much more to choose from, that's for sure. And with the 400 new perks that are added into the game, I also put on the 50 more perk points, which allows you to earn a perk point every time you level up. And then every two levels, you receive a additional perk point. So every two levels, you'll get two perks to increase rather than one. And there's different types. If you want to do 100, I'm pretty sure there's a 100 one as well, but I felt like that was a bit too much. So earning two every two levels and one every other level, then I think that's a pretty fair system and it doesn't like break the game in any way. And I, I'm still like a pretty low level i'm only level 12 and i don't have many perks still it's not like i'm overloaded yet so uh, i think it's a pretty fair mod to add on with ordinator and uh, moving on we have the bandolier bags and pouches which is what is increasing my carry weight a whole lot i have 410 carry weight right now because i have these pouches on the back let me get rid of my arrows so i can show you see those little yeah, I have like two little flaps on the back there, and they're actually craftable under the leather tanning rack over here. Let me just show you real quick. I'll run over here under the leather category. There's plenty to choose from. There's so many that you can get. There's a there's a dark book holder. There's uh, the dark pouch, which I'm trying to craft here later on in my playthrough. We have a large bandolier here, which increases the carry weight by 100 points. Then there's a shoulder pad, a back left pad, back right, front left. There's so many different places to put these, and it just customizes your character a lot while also giving you the bonus of increasing your carry weight as well. So I really like that mod as well, and we have the vial holders that... Um, will carry your potions and everything like that while also making your character look a lot more better if you are a alchemist and you're running around you want to have those vials on your side and it'll just add to the immersion to the game as well so that's why I really like that mod I also have the enhanced blood textures enabled as well which just pretty much does exactly what it says it just makes blood a lot more common in Skyrim and it's not just like splattery it's more like if you're getting hit and you're hitting the other person there's gonna be blood going everywhere there's gonna be blood on the ground blood on your weapon blood on everything it's just a lot more realistic and it uses a bunch of plugins and scripts to actually make that possible so it makes the game a lot more realistic whenever you're swinging a sword at someone with no armor on blood is gonna be flying and that is what I really 
like whenever you're taking care of enemies like bandits in caves. Very satisfying. Especially with the big kill moves and your decapitation. It is ten times more, you know, gory and more realistic and just <laughs> very gruesome as well. And that's just, that's what I like about the game there. Uh, I have the Semper Fi mod enabled as well, which is just a re-customization of the Imperial Armor. Um, we have the Elven Armor Replacer as well, as you can see in the thumbnails of both. I don't know if you guys can see the thumbnails, but um, that's what the armor will look like. And then I also have the Oblivion and Morrowind music patch, which just adds Oblivion music and Morrowind music to the menus. And also whenever you're playing in game and exploring around the world of Skyrim, you'll be hearing Oblivion music here and there and Morrowind music here and there, which is pretty cool. I really like both those games and their soundtracks are just amazing as well. Um, we have the complete archery overhaul, which changes pretty much everything in the game of when it comes to marksmen. There's arrows and bolts now do 100% more damage, which I think they do, which I really think they should have in the beginning, because arrows are very powerful, such as like bullets in real life. I feel like they should be a lot more powerful than they were in the vanilla version of Skyrim. And uh, they do, bows and crossbows do 50% more damage, but draw 15% slower. And uh, this mixed up with the more perks in Skyrim, um, just allows for you to have a complete overhaul on the entire marksman category. And it just makes your character a lot better when it comes to having an archery playthrough. We have the Beast of Tamriel, which I explained in the last episode of the Top 5 Mods of the Week. Um, pretty much adds 80 plus new animals and creatures into the game that are really hard to kill. Some of them are like crazy, really ridiculously hard to kill. And so you really got to be careful whenever you're playing on Expert or whatever difficulty you're playing on because you'll be having a hard time killing them. So if you have a follower, I'd strongly recommend getting your follower and going out there and trying to actually kill these beasts because that's how I leveled up so fast. I was using my Marksman skill tree and I was taking out these enemies from pretty far away and I was be I was taking my time because I died several times outside. I died several times to these creatures and it makes the game a lot harder and that's what I really like. So if you want to fight beasts outside of Whiterun or pretty much anywhere you go and there's also going to be a lot more encounters whenever you're walking around and exploring then this is the mod for you i also have the get no more dead followers i actually don't have a follower on this playthrough yet but once i do i'm definitely going to be using this because this just makes it so you're not able to kill your follower anytime i ever get fandal i always end up killing him on accident every time i i just don't know how i just accidentally end up killing him by hitting him with either a spell or a bow or anything like that and he ends up dying and i forget that he died or I don't notice that he's dead until I'm done clearing the cave and so I don't reload a save and he just stays dead. This changes that so that you can put a amulet on him and he won't be able to die from your hits or anyone else's hits but he can still drop to one knee and be harmed like that. Um, so he can't actually die but he can be killed out of combat and he won't actually die altogether. He will just be out of combat for a while. So it's still fair. It's still a fair mod. It just keeps your follower from dying. Then we have the three different um, citizen overhauls that I have. We have the Divine People, which just changes how they look. It changes them to be more realistic and more lore-friendly. We have 30-plus more lore-friendly hairs, 300 new NPCs that were redesigned. There's more beards in the game. You know, there's a whole bunch of different makeup now. And then all the NPCs in the game look a whole lot different. You'll notice it right away. And then we also have the immersive citizens and realistic conversations, which if I go up here during the day, we might actually be able to catch some realistic conversations going on around here. So as you can see, everyone is doing their own thing. The this with immersive citizens they actually like stock their they actually stock their stuff that they have on display the more people will be walking around actually buying stuff from the shops they'll actually be looking around as you can see that's what they're doing now they're actually looking at these shops and there will be more you know interaction between the characters and then with the realistic conversations there won't be the long pause between sentences on characters so that the conversations actually seem realistic see as you can see like even with this this was never in the vanilla version they wouldn't just be sitting down like anywhere and just leaning up against like poles like this like it, it just changes the little things about the game but uh you you could definitely notice that the citizens are a lot more you know their ai has definitely been built up and they definitely are more smarter when it comes to walking around the world and actually talking to people 
Now the last three mods that I have on this playthrough, we have Gray's Riften Cleanup, which makes it so Riften is completely clean and there's no like lag going on because Riften is a very small city, but everything is so compact into one area that sometimes it's a little overwhelming for the game and it gets really laggy there. So this just changes it so you won't have any lag and there's not as much, you know, wasted items on the outside of Riften that really frees your game up. So it makes it so that you'll have a solid frame rate during going through Riften and it'll just be really playable there we have the static mesh improvement mod which i can show you really quick here in a second and i also have the skyrim 1k mod or skyland 1k sorry about that uh, skyland 1k which changes pretty much every texture on the outside of skyrim and i will show you that as well so if i go over to the barrel as you can see it'll open up and it'll slide to the left making it more realistic whenever opening up barrels and it also does the same with chests or anything along those lines just makes it a lot more realistic that's the static mesh improvement and it also makes them higher textured as well so that they actually look a lot better as you can see these barrels look a lot different than the vanilla version barrels and the skyland 1k which i'll show you right now let me just travel outside of white run to a different location and you'll pretty much be able to notice that the world looks a whole lot more beautiful that's why it's at the bottom of my load order it changes pretty much all of the textures throughout skyrim so that's a pretty big mod and the skyland 1k is a very very large mod as well i don't actually remember how much it takes up space wise but it is it's a high amount it's a high amount of megabytes that's for sure and just walking around here you could you could tell right away that there was a big change in the scenery and a big change and everything looks a lot more you know high definition and there's a lot more detail put into this mod as well so it just makes Skyrim look 10 times better and with a mix of all these other mods that I have installed it just creates the perfect playthrough for you and your character no matter what kind of character you have whether you're a mage or a one-handed two-handed or anything along those lines you're gonna have a great playthrough so there is a whole bunch of mods as you can see the total that I have on here is 3.74 gigs which means I still have 1.26 left but that's still a lot of space to take up for just mods on one playthrough so if you do want to have a similar playthrough to what I'm going through right now then definitely download all these mods and set them up in this order and you'll have a great time playing Skyrim again so hopefully you guys did enjoy this different video and thank you guys again for watching 75 weeks of Skyrim mods it really means a lot to me that you guys have stuck with me this long and through this very long series so thank you guys so much again for that and if you guys did enjoy this video i would appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you knew it really helps me out a lot and yeah that's pretty much it hopefully you guys did enjoy and i'll talk to you guys later